Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Chicken Little. Now we're running through the alien spaceship as our titular hero. It's the titular role. Bonus points to anyone watching who knows what that's from. Anyway, yeah, this is a fun little level. I actually, um, you know, not that I, you know, dislike this game or anything like that, but, uh, it, um... It's been grown on me with these more recent levels, with these later levels. Uh, I, I played a, most of these levels that you're seeing, only up to a certain point though. I don't really remember what level I got up to. I know I didn't beat the game on stream, but I did play these these levels on stream. Excuse me, I'm burping like 50 times in a row. Um, I did do these levels on stream, and I remembered enjoying them then, and I never, obviously never got to play them as a kid, because I never got past the Alien Abbey level, so, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, they're fun, I don't know, it's like new stuff in the game than what I'm used to, and it just feels very different because of the setting and the music, especially, I didn't, um, I forgot to mention in the commentary in the last video, because I was noticing it when I was playing it, um, but not so much when I was recording. The music in these levels is really cool. Like, it's just... It's very catchy, and it's got a lot of good little zappy, zippy sounds. The Alien Abbey song, this one, and then, uh... There's gonna be another space simulator, uh... Or spaceship simulator, whatever it is, um... Later on, and so... Uh, the music in that one, I don't remember if it's the same music as in the first one, but, uh, yeah, it's pretty funky, and I like it. And just in general, I think this game is, like, mostly pretty easy and very straightforward, but, I don't know, it's neat. You get a good sort of variety of places and variety of different game mode stuff to do. Uh, obviously here, um, we are about to be given the slingshot so we can shoot at things, which is very nice. It's, you know, pretty standard game stuff. I did not know that standing this close to them would result in me getting hurt. I thought surely this wouldn't hurt me, but no, this blast goes out pretty far. And if you don't break all the glass things before you break these big, uh, I don't know, electricity balls? They look like those things, those lights that, you know, when you put your fingers on the outside of them, the little lightning bolts go to your fingers. Whatever those are called. I usually just call them, like, wizard balls or something, but that sounds like I'm talking about a wizard's testicles, and I'm, I'm not doing that. Um, but, yeah. Sorry, I kind of forgot what I was talking about after I mentioned wizard testicles. Um, and these platforms, these like ghostly alien platforms, are a little weird. It's kind of hard to tell when you are when you're stepping off of them. They don't have very uh, clearly defined edges compared to other uh, things. Platforms. That's the word I was looking for. I love when I forget whole words for stuff. They're just normal. These things are annoying. These little uh, robots. I think I'm about to get murdered by one of them. And this sudden change in camera perspective and red flashing lights is alarming. I mean, I, I think this level is called Space Alarm, so... I mean, they got me. I am alarmed, and I am in space. I guess we're all technically in space in a way. Oh my god, that reminds me of one... I, I saw a tweet. I saw a tweet. And, you know, whenever whenever you start a story with that, you know it's not going to be good. Unless you're talking about a good tweet. But most of the time, it's not going to be good, and including this time. I saw one of the dumbest things on Twitter I've ever seen, which is really saying something, because I see dumb shit constantly on Twitter. I mean, if you're on Twitter, then you know. 
but I mean, and I don't, I don't like follow dumb people. It's just, you know, for one thing, Twitter shows you a bunch of shit other than stuff from the people you follow. That would be really cool, by the way. Like, I know I'm jumping topics right now, but um, an app that I re really rarely use anyway, but am now like even less inclined to ever go on is Instagram. And uh, I guess they made like a change in their algorithm for the feeds really recently, and it has resulted in a huge drop in engagements just across the board for a lot of posters, including some like famous ones. Um, because I think it has something to do with like if your posts don't on average or I don't know if it's on average or post by post. Um, I, I thought you could shoot I'm, I'm gonna do try it right now. I thought you could shoot this thing and blow it up this little thing that has it looks like it has nipples. But anyway, yeah, if you don't, if it doesn't get a certain number of likes within a certain number of minutes or hours, then it won't show up on people's feeds at all. And that's basically it, is just that, you know, prioritizing ads and promoted content and only having stuff be on the feed for, like, a couple hours a day at most. Um, and it's only the stuff that has, like, the highest rate or number of engagements within a certain time period, and, uh, yeah, it's, like, fucked everybody up, and it makes your feed stupid, because instead of seeing, you know, just the people you follow, like, what is so hard about an app that just shows you the things posted by the people you follow in the order they were posted? Is that not just a completely, like no-brainer way to do a website. I mean, I know that it's, you know, social networks and they have to suck dick and do ads and whatnot. Like, ads, I've, I've made my peace with the presence of ads on websites. Most of the time, I either am ignoring them or, you know, I have some sort of extension or something that prevents me from even seeing them. But with Twitter and stuff, especially when I'm using it on my phone and it's like promoted posts, not really much you can do about that. I did not know that you can get up here. You can't go anywhere on it, except for this one part. Don't know why, but it's pretty funny. Um, yeah. Hold on, I need to sip. Okay, I sipped. I also cracked my neck. I really like these laser things. Uh, another thing that was present in a million things that I watched and played as a kid and that I thought would be much more relevant. And, uh, it's a good thing that I didn't see the first Resident Evil movie when I was a child, because that probably would have scared the shit out of me whenever I see a red, uh, what do you call them? Security lines? Security, uh, lasers? Whatever you want. Motion sensing lasers? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, cause there's the really awesome scene in the first Resident Evil movie where one guy gets chopped up into a bunch of little cubes by the, by the lasers. Um, what was I talking about? Shit. Oh, yeah, but I just think that's, that would be like the most sensible way to set up an app like you could still have ads and annoying shit and like promoted stuff you could even you could even prioritize them honestly like y you can show me all the promoted stuff first in the order that it was posted and then you show me everything that people posted whatever but like i don't know i don't get the point in only ever showing like 10 things on a user's feed and like, half of it isn't even, like, stuff from people they follow. I know that the people who run these websites do not actually have in mind, like, the actual experience or happiness of the people who use them, but they could at least act like it a little bit. I, you know, I, I'm not to act like the internet was ever, you know, completely perfect and everything, but I just feel like back in the day, there used to be at least some semblance of, like, you know, 
you know, concern for the user experience, you know. But I, I guess that has, uh, you know, the the internet world and the tech industry is uh, a little bit different now. It's more, it's bigger, it's more ubiquitous, it's more, uh, you know, uh, more inextricably linked to financial capital than it was when it started, even though it, it was very much linked to it by then. I mean, I guess that's not really the thing that... I don't know what's different. I don't know what changed. Maybe things just got worse. Or maybe everything has always sucked, and it's just deteriorating, but also staying the same in the same way that everything does. And that it's really just a matter of, I am, you know waxing nostalgic for a time on the internet that was going on when I was my, a child. But I can't be the only one who thinks that it's, like, objectively better. Just the general way that websites were. I don't- I'm not smart enough to, like, articulate what I mean, but it, I just feel like there used to be more good websites, and they used to be, like, pleasant to look at and to use, generally. Maybe we were all distracted by how long it took to load things because of the internet, but like, why can't we have, you know, modern fiber optic broadband internet with old website, with like early to mid 2000s web design and like early to mid 2000s just like approach to doing websites in general? I don't know. Because now there are four websites, and they all make you want to die. And uh, news websites, I know I've talked about this before, but news websites are fucking impossible to use. Between, you know, every website's got cookies that you gotta accept. Um, every website's got, you know, you know, the newsletter, or, you know, turn off your ad block so we can shove a bunch of ads in your face, or you have to register... Like, paywalls are already a bad enough thing, but to then have all this other shit, and then a bunch of news sites like to have auto-playing videos, and the worst are the ones that follow you while you scroll. And then every other, you know, even if it's not a, like, news news website, but, you know, just sites that run articles and stuff, like, and, like, magazines and, and well, online magazines and stuff, um are just filled with bullshit. They're just filled with ads for bullshit, and they're filled with huge things that just are in the middle of whatever you're looking at, and are, like, take up the vast majority of the page, and... I don't know. I just... I... And I, I mean, there are other problems, too. I could talk about the actual look of these things, and, like, the color and everything, and, uh, you know, just the setup of, like, how stuff looks on the screen, but again, I'm not really smart enough to articulate all of that. And also, you know, I've talked about most of this before. There's no use in bitching about it. It's not going to change. Um, but eh, what are you, you going to do? We, if only we had known how good we had it. I think I was originally talking about something, and then that was like an offshoot of it. And I don't remember what the original thing was, so if you were looking forward to hearing me finish that thought, I apologize, because I'm not going to do it right now. Maybe when I go back and watch this when I edit it, I can uh, do what I very frequently do, which is write down in my notes for commentary for the next video of what I forgot to say, just so just so it's out there and so everybody knows hey i i had a thought and i'm by golly i'm gonna say it in the video um i miss a couple of uh trading cards in this one i also die at one point because i suck dick at shit like this this version i find to be much harder than the first uh simulator where you're going forward I'm really bad at, like, Galaga and shit like that. I can't even imagine if I tried to play an actually hard version of this kind of game, like Ikaruga or something. I, like, I'd be dog shit. There's basically no point in me doing that. Um, I don't know. It's just a lot of stuff going on on the screen at once, and I'm just, I'm not as, I'm not coordinated enough 
And for this game, it's only, like, a couple of levels that you're doing it, so... I feel like if it were, like, the whole game, I may have the advantage of being able to, like, do it over and over again and get used to it, but this is... these are just, like, little five-minute things that you do at random points. I think there may be one more. Like I said, I haven't beaten this game, so I don't actually know how many levels there are. I know I've looked at a list before, but, like, I'm gonna remember that shit. Um... But yeah, one thing I wanted to mention, just one for fun, and I was thinking about it a minute ago, so I'm going to talk about it now, because I don't really have anything to say about this. Um, and also, just in case any of the four people who watch my videos uh, live in California, and are, I don't even know if it's all the state of California, it might just be one part of it. But whatever, if you live there or know anybody who does, you can tell them to, to you know, to... Uh, to heat. Yeah, I don't know how I missed that that one. I thought that I went right... I Did I go under it? I don't know if, how you can do that, but whatever. Uh, that is Prop 22 in California, which if you are in California, you're probably fucking sick of hearing about it because a lot of people are spending a lot of money telling you to vote for <laughs> a vote yes on Prop 22, which, if you don't know what it is, it's essentially just uh, uh, letting... Um, you know, I, I don't know how you would, uh, how you would describe these businesses. Like, Uber, Lyft, Instacart, that sort of thing. Those app-based, I guess gig work, gig economy work and jobs. Um, that they can, uh, list them as independent contractors rather than employees. Um, and, uh, there are a lot of shitty implications for that on the part of the of the workers the main one being that you don't have to be paid as much as they would legally be required to you have just generally fewer rights when it comes to how they can fire you how they can treat you what they are and are not liable for like in terms of the risks that you take being a, that kind of driver like uh it's not very good, and apparently both the drivers and the riders for Uber in Southern California have to, um, they have to click either yes or okay on voting for Prop 22. They have a screen every time you want to get a ride or anytime, anytime you're picking up a ride as a driver or anytime you're ordering a ride as a rider, um, which is pretty whack, um... And, uh, it's really funny, of course, that the, that Uber is, you know, saying that they can't afford to pay their employees as much as they would have to if they were listed as employees, but they've spent, like, $150 million on campaigns telling people to vote for this thing that will make it so they don't have to do that. Um, really awesome how that kind of stuff works. Um, and yeah, I'm sure that, you know, 50% of America will be gig economy workers once this, uh, passes and then the Supreme Court, uh, codifies it into law that pretty much any company can do that. I'll be great. On that cheery note, uh, our friend is dead. 